One soft spring day, a young man planted a little apple sapling on a green hillside. Pleased with the sight of it tucked into the warm soil, he rested and gazed at its beauty. Just then, a robin with a damaged wing hopped onto the soil above the newly planted roots and peeked up to the top branch, eyeing its leaves quivering in the breeze. The young man whispered, I will lift you up. And the robin allowed the strong, gentle hand to lift him onto the branch. Thanking his friend, the robin asked, What gift would you like in return for your kindness to me? O'Brien for that was the man's name, sighed dreamily. I would like this tree to blossom and bring forth many red apples. It would be so wonderful to have such beautiful fruit to share with my friends and with the strangers who pass along this way. With this fruit, I would offer the hand of friendship and peace. After a long silence, O'Brien turned again to look at the little robin, but found he was no longer there. Blushing at his own simplicity, the young man bent to pick up the stick which lay at his side, for he was lame from birth. But what is this? A flutter of tiny birds flew round and round his head, and O'Brien could see a streak of red forming a fiery circle in the sky above him. And with one swoop, all the little robins lifted his stick into the air. O'Brien found himself dancing and jumping for joy at the sight, for such beauty he had never seen. The robin called. You wish has brought healing to my broken wing and your own crooked lip. Now dance and use your talent to bring comfort and joy to many people and let your life bear forth the fruitfulness you wished for. ago now, since that lovable dancing master lifted the little robin to the branch, and many a bird has rested there since. Certainly, I should know, for I am that tree. wanted me to be, and so I am. I've life in me to share, and that life is stirred up sometimes by the imagination of the wind. Come under my shelter and be loved. Hide under my boughs and listen. There's an old man sleeping down at my feet, but he won't mind you, for a kind and gentle man is he. Listen, the wind is stirring.
Do you hear anything yet? On Glushen to Ain Rod Foes.
little sapling who is now speaking to you was growing slowly but surely, enduring all the ferocities of nature which consistently hurled themselves at its tender leaves and tiny branches. The worst times were when the frost gnawed at its very roots, trying to destabilize, to destroy. But the right nourishment was given at the right time, and so the spirited life kept renewing itself in this tree so special to the dancing master. So too did the love between the young O'Brien and his new bride renew itself with every passing hour. A little treasure was born to them, awash with love. Spring came and went many times after that, and no other child was born to the dancing master and his wife. But their only child, the lad, Queevy, was nimble on his feet like his father and mother before him. It was more than once that he had won the village prize for dancing, the coveted cake and rosy apples. On those occasions, father and son would creep up in the dusky hours to share their prize, my maturing branches keeping the rain from their heads. I was the only one, apart from Ned, the blind piper, who knew about their playful conspiracy. Oh, how they would enjoy it when the wealthy people would flounder and scratch their heads, saying, I really thought I had it mastered this time.
Cuivin O'Brien was much respected in the village, not only for his dancing, but as a natural leader. And as the years rolled by, he began to be influenced by rumours and stories of quite a different nature. Some friends from neighbouring villages had been attending meetings and the once sporting heroes with their fine wooden hurleys now wielded long bright weapons known as pikes. There were no longer smiles on the people's faces in the village squares. Spies lurked in the shadows. Strangers were treated with suspicion. The welcomes had dwindled to a mere flicker. And worst of all, the dancing stopped. Try as they might, the people of the village just could not continue living in the same way as they had before. Even O'Brien, the dancing master, did not succeed in gathering the villagers for their regular sessions of dancing and crack. There was nothing to celebrate. The words of the robin now seemed like a dream. Dance, use your talent to bring comfort and joy to many people, and let your living bear forth the fruitfulness you wished for. And strange, how strange it was to O'Brien that the apple tree had never produced any fruit. A great depression seemed to settle on the once lively, spirited people. There was no dancing. O'Brien began to limp again. The man of the cloth was torn between God urging him to trust and the injustice all around. He could see only too well the change that had come in the fun-loving boys who looked to him to lead them.
one of the rebels was travelling more and more to the next village, bringing back stories of the local curate who was speaking out vigorously against the injustices all around. The plight of the poor, the suffering of his people, these were the topics of the sermons frequently preached from the pulpit, and the number of sympathetic listeners grew and grew, until one day, with fire in his eyes, Quivin was heard exclaiming, He's one of us! The tide is turning! There's no stopping it now!
time passed slowly. Many winters came and went. The dancing master never danced again. His leaden feet echoed the dull thud of his breaking heart. Left alone after the ravages of death took his bride and his friend Ned the Blind Piper, he eked out a meagre living, mending the shoes of the very pupils he had once taught to dance. Often the old master would climb the hill to the apple tree and would bring his three treasures, the ring he had put on the finger of his bride, Queeveen's first dancing shoes, and old Ned's pipes. Looking at them, memories of their beloved owners flooded back, and a semblance of life seemed to trickle into his worn out feet. And in his dreams, his feet twitched, and he would think he was dancing again. But then the cold wind would waken him, and he would find he was alone once more. Until, that is, one moonlit night, while sleeping under the apple tree, his three beloved friends came to him in a dream. But this time, they were accompanied by a beautiful child. The child seemed to beckon to our old master to come to him to reach out and take him up in his aching arms. Thank <laughs> you. 